Hey, what's up everybody? Too Tall Toby here and welcome to the monthly speed modeling leaderboard challenge where we challenge you to use any 3D CAD system you want and see how quickly you can create three dimensionally perfect 3D models. So this challenge is very much modeled off of the traditional video game speed running where you use a clock and you go from checkpoint one to checkpoint two to checkpoint three. But instead of going to checkpoints in the video game, we are gonna be creating 3D CAD models. So the purpose of today's video is just to give you an overview of the rules. If you wanna participate in this challenge, visit us at twotalltoby.com slash leaderboard. And you can see here is a link to all of the rules in detail. Today, I'm just gonna give you a quick overview so that you can get started with this challenge. So here we can see that in section one, practice. You can download these images of the, of the prints and you can practice, practice, practice as much as you want. You can come up with the optimal strategy to create your speed run. And part of that optimal strategy might be deviating from the dimensioning scheme on the print. The, the requirement is that the end resultant geometry needs to match exactly with the print at one to one. So that means that if on the print, if I show a pocket that's cut to a depth that's eight millimeters offset from a wall and you decide to cut it to a depth of 32 millimeters blind, that's fine. You know, you're deviating from the dimensioning scheme, but the end result is that that wall is still eight millimeters. So you can deviate from the dimensioning scheme. However, the geometry does need to be a perfect match to what is called out on the 2D print. So all the holes have to be in the right location. All of the walls have to be in the right location. Everything has to be in the correct location in order for your video to qualify. So practice, practice, practice as much as you want. Come up with the ideal strategy for your run. Section number two, recording. When you make your recording, the recording needs to include three things. Your CAD system on the screen, the mass of each model, and the official timer that we provide. Anything else you wanna add is fine. If you wanna add a video feed of your face or your keyboard or your mouse or add some music, that's all fine, but it's not necessary. What is necessary is that you bring up your CAD system, you bring up the clock, you press the start button on your recorder, and then you start the clock and then you start your first model. You model the first model, you clearly show the mass on the screen, and then you click the checkpoint button to advance to the second model. You model up the second model, clearly show the mass, and then click the checkpoint button. Model up the third model, clearly show the mass, and then hit the final checkpoint button. That will stop the clock, and at that point, you can stop your recording, and that is what is required for the submission of your recording. Now, as far as the clock goes, the clock does need to be visible in the recording. We need to be able to clearly see that there's no time lapse, that there's no jump edits or anything like that. It needs to be a true one-to-one. -one. one second on the clock needs to match one second on your video. So just make sure that you're clearly showing the clock so that we can verify that and make sure that you're clearly showing the mass of each model so we can verify that as well. Moving down to section three, CAD related questions. Each time you start a new, new part, it does need to be a new document, a new part studio, uh, a, a new part. You know, it's gonna be different for the different CAD systems, but the point is you can't just jump from one window to another and potentially have that, that blank document with some embedded information that's gonna help you with your speed run. It needs to be a new document each time. So new document, new part, uh, new part studio, whatever it is, you need to make a new document for each segment of your speed run. So just make sure that you do that. Um, you can use templates. If you wanna create a template that has the material and that has the um, uh, unit system pre-cooked, that's fine. You can use a mass calculator to help you with calculating the final mass. That's fine as well, but just make sure that it's a new document. As far as macros and custom features go, basically the rule is you can use any custom features as long as they are generally used throughout mechanical engineering. So for example, if you have a custom utility that helps you speed up the process of mirroring bodies, like you can mirror it in two directions at the same time or something like that, you can use that because you would use that throughout your day-to-day -day mechanical engineering job. Uh, but if you have a custom macro that you wrote that builds like five features for this specific model, you can't use that. That's obviously something that was coded specifically for this challenge and you're not gonna be able to use that. So instead, make those features yourself. The, the whole point of this challenge is for you to create the models using the traditional tools in your system. Um, if you're using whole wizard tools, that's fine. Like whole wizard and SolidWorks or whole creation tools and Onshape or a Libre, that's fine. And uh, that's basically the gist of section three. 
And so finally, section four, submitting your run. So when you're done creating your recording, you know, you start the clock, you do your speed run, you end the clock, you end the recording. When you're done doing your recording, you have to post it somewhere. Uh, post it on YouTube, post it on uh, Google Drive, you know, Dropbox, Reddit, uh, LinkedIn, post it wherever you want. And then after you post it, you log in here at twotalltoby.com. And when you log into your profile, there's gonna be a section where you can post the link to your speed run. So you find your speed run and then you post the link to that speed run. And uh, then that link will show up on the leaderboard. I'll look at it, I'll verify it. And then the icon will change from not verified to your CAD system icon. Now, you can run more than once. You can you know, try to improve your time by running again and again and again. And you can also run with multiple CAD systems. And the way this will work is when you're using the same CAD system, I'm just gonna delete all the slower times and only your fastest time will count. But if you're using different CAD systems, each one of those fastest runs will show up on the leaderboard. So it is possible that one person could hold first place, second place, and third place if that person is a wizard in SolidWorks and Onshape and a Libre, for example. Uh, so you could actually have multiple places here on the leaderboard using different CAD systems and that is totally fine. So that's the gist of these rules. Take a look at the full explanation of the rules here at twotalltoby.com slash leaderboard. But I hope that this helps get you excited. I hope this helps get you started. And I'm looking forward to seeing everybody's speed runs. It's always a lot of fun to see these different CAD systems trying to model the same parts using very different techniques. Good luck, everybody. And I will see you on the leaderboard.